Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack. This is Raj here. Friends, we look at Ginkgo Bioworks stock price and it often leads to us not taking Ginkgo Bioworks seriously. I have not been uh, doing my homework on this company. So today I am taking, a, uh, taking this seriously and I'm starting a new series of short videos to talk about uh, Ginkgo's acquisitions in the month of February and how it enhances the value of the company. The first under the microscope will be the acquisition of uh, Proof Diagnostic, which happened uh, yesterday. And um, uh, there are two more companies that they took over yesterday. I'm gonna talk about them also in subsequent videos. So let's get started. Welcome back, friends. On 20th of February, 2024, we had an announcement that Ginkgo Bioworks has acquired Proof Diagnostics, a life sciences company. Proof Diagnostics specializes in tools, diagnostics, and computational discovery. And Proof Diagnostics has developed a cost-effective, rapid, and sensitive diagnostic system for diseases, including SARS, covid 2 flu, RSV, and also oncology using CRISPR-based and other technologies. Ginkgo's interest lies in Proof's omega RNA programmable libraries and non-CAS enzymes. Omegas offer a smaller, more diverse, and robust uh, class of programmable nucleases, enhancing deliverability to cells and expanding therapeutic approaches as per uh, Ginkgo. And Ginkgo aims to use Omega Proof's Omega libraries to strengthen its gen gene therapy services, providing customers with an additional tool for efficient gene editing. However, if you were to visit the website of Proof Diagnostics, we do not find much information about this. Let me show you the Proof Diagnostic website briefly. Here we are in the website for Proof Diagnostics, and it uh, sure talks about the COVID-19 molecular testing, which is the highlight of the homepage. It also talks about uh, app that can be used to scale up. It shows a bunch of partners, some high profile partners out here uh, with whom it is aligned. Uh, so this is a new company. And I went into the about section and it has been uh, co-founded by Feng Zhang, who is a prolific uh, uh, entrepreneur and a great academic and has got a lot of contributions. So this company has got a great pedigree and I could not find anything about Omega anywhere. It seems to be a smaller company. I don't think they have too many uh, staff out there. Uh, and there is no mention of Omega to the best of my knowledge. I, I scanned the whole website. I couldn't find anything about uh, Omega. However, if we uh, go into the uh, page in Ginkgo Bioworks for uh, its gene therapy services, we can see a different class of offerings and I'm trying to find out how Omegas fit into it. Let me show you the landing page for Ginkgo Bioworks Gene Therapy Services, which is this particular page. So what Ginkgo Bioworks does for its gene therapy services is that it creates AAV. Now AAV creation requires a little bit of sophistication because AAV should be in the right concentration and it should be of the right quality. So it's very important for the therapy to be effective. It needs the right kind of concentration. And it has been a bottleneck for the industry to get really good quality AAV in the right amount of concentration. So this is a very good area of business to be in. And in this, uh, Ginkgo Bioworks does uh, capsid engineering, payload engineering, and AAV production. And they have uh, the ability uh, to modify the strains of the virus, just like they do with uh, organisms for fermentation. Uh, they have a database uh, with the various characteristics of these vectors, and they can start off very quickly from uh, one of the vectors which closely matches what the client is looking for, and then tweak the remaining parts of the genome in order to get exactly what the client is looking for. So if I was to look at the website out here, it talks about uh, capsid engineering, uh, capsid acids, uh, which can reach various parts of the body, uh, capsid engineering uh, to build specific characteristics into it, payload engineering in order to take specific payload, and also the production in the right concentration, so quality control and good quality of production with a high throughput uh, like they have with the foundry. Uh, so all these things are really good. I'm still trying to figure out how uh, the Omega uh, platform fits into this. It will come to me, there will be some articles sooner rather than later and we'll get a better understanding of that. And uh, today we're going to get the uh, earnings release for uh, Ginkgo Bioworks. And while I was uh, doing this video, I saw a news flash saying that Ginkgo had just released its earnings. So I'm going to study that and I have to you in a couple of days. 
And in the meantime, what I'm planning to do is to make a video on each of those four uh, aspects of uh, AAV manufacture by uh, Ginkgo Bioworks, those services that it provides. Uh, there will be one separate video each and I'll try to do that in the next five to six days uh, so that we get a handle on uh, Ginkgo Bioworks. And friends, my only concern uh, with Ginkgo Bioworks is related to the pace at which they are doing acquisitions. Let me uh, illustrate my point with just the three acquisitions that was done uh, in the month of uh, February. On the 28th, they announced three acquisitions simultaneously. The first one uh, is the one that I'm doing right now, proof diagnostic, this is what I'm doing in the video today. The next one is patch biosciences, I'll talk about that separately. And another one called Revery Labs, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Revery Labs uh, is another one. So there are three of these. And during my own career working in industry, what I had found was that uh, when uh, a merger takes place, it's not always easy. I worked in a bank that had uh, uh, acquired a legacy bank. And for a good period of time, the executives from the legacy bank and the ones from the acquiring bank had a different culture and there was friction. And it took the bank almost a decade uh, in order to get some semblance of a common identity. And in the process, many of the acquiring uh, uh, bank executive, uh, the acquired company executives were let go or they left by themselves. So those kind of churns happen. And uh, the other aspect that I personally experienced as a project manager in the financial services industry was that my projects, technologically, they were very easy because the software does exactly what it is supposed to. So if you have operating system software, it does exactly what it's supposed to. If you have web hosting software, it does exactly what it's supposed to. And even the programmer, when they do the coding, either their code is right or it's wrong. It can be clearly fixed. And those things are all easy to do. What is difficult, however, is dealing with the middle management and the executive level where they have the organizational politics and organizational um, uh, dissonance in the sense that unless all the executives are aligned to a common objective, uh, there is always the question of uh, uh, preserving the profitability of one's cost center and therefore not being willing to pay for the common payload which builds the common infrastructure on which all the profit centers work, for example. So these are the kind of conflicts that happen within organizations and uh, that reduces the efficiency of the organization and its capability to reach its destination in a short period of time. It increases the duration of the journey. And when we look at a company like Ginkgo Bioworks, just in February, they have three acquisitions and friends. We have been covering this company for almost a year and a half now. And we have seen so many acquisitions take place, small companies, medium-sized companies, two-man companies, five-man companies, all of them are coming in. Now, when these small companies are working on a project, they have a sense of urgency. They have limited funds. They have the career of the a limited number of people on the line and they are like running like their hairs on fire and they're trying to uh, reach their destination of finding a solution before the money runs out. But when you take a company like that and bring it into an ocean like uh, Ginkgo Bioworks with a billion dollars in the balance sheet, I, I don't think the same amount of urgency uh, can sustain itself when it gets into this environment. And then on top of that, you look at the marriage of the work culture and the executives and their uh, objectives uh, where does the acquired company fit in? How high in the priority is it going to be? Or is it something that's going to be an acquisition which is later on going to be useless because uh, the motivation was not there, the mentorship was not there? Take the case of proof. I mean, Feng Zhang is out there giving mentorship to, uh, to this group. The scientific advisory consists of Feng Zhang, right? And he has a lot of companies to his belt and he's, he's a great asset to be on the, on the team. Now, how much of uh, Feng Zhang's uh, mentorship is going to be available? We don't know about that. And then there are the other co-founders, uh, Omar Abudai and Jonathan Gutenberg. And these two are also bringing a lot of uh, uh, knowledge to the table. In fact, it would have been their PhD projects, I think, which got them into this situation where they were able to launch this company. So how do you replace uh, this kind of talent and knowledge base uh, to keep things going? And if you look at the size of the company, I, I don't know if this is all the people that the company has got. 
uh, obviously they don't have their own office they are in lab central it seems so it's a smaller company how do you uh, make sure that all the members of this company uh, feel that they are equally important and they will get the resources that they need and they will get the attention of the ceo um, so that all their problems and obstacles which they may face on their uh, on their path can be resolved quickly so i don't know how it's going to be achieved because there are so many companies that uh, ginkgo bioworks has taken over but on the other hand uh, they got high profile uh, partners and they got uh, recognition at higher levels so it's it becomes a bit of a confusing uh, scenario and as an investor of a particular vintage like i'm 60 i'm almost 60 now so i've got to get into the risk profile where i'm careful about what i do i'm looking at ginkgo i'm tempted by its uh, future prospects because it's an amazing company it's like the microsoft of uh, gene technology uh, but at the same time the question is can they pull it off and how are they assimilating all these companies and realizing the synergies how are they making sure that each of these companies will meet their goal um, at the same time if not later uh, than uh, what they would have done when they were on their own so the sense of urgency for making the goals has to be maintained how are they going to do that how how do they build a cohesive work culture where the executives from different organizations find that they are suitably rewarded and su- suitably recognized and are suitably integrated into the organization structure uh, so that they are efficiently motivated to continue uh, working away uh, towards the goal that they were focused on when they were taken over so those are the questions that i've i'm looking for answers and very soon i'll have those four videos for you talking about the aav the four uh, areas on which uh, ginkgo is working and then we'll talk about the other acquisitions of course in the next few days i'll bring to you the earnings release and my uh, take on ginkgo bioworks earnings and with that my friends i'd like to bring this video to an end i hope you like this video please do not hesitate to press a like out there and i have seen that most of our viewers are not our subscribers so i request you to please subscribe it doesn't cost you anything but it helps the channel and it motivates me to come with more videos so thanks a lot have a great day bye for now